Hey, everybody, and welcome to today's Fotino launch webinar. We're excited to share with you what we've been working on and how you can get involved. More about that shortly. My name is Jim Duffy, and it's my job to kick off the webinar and introduce our presenter. Whether this is your first time attending one of our webinars or the fifth, thank you so much for joining us. Our presenter today is Otto Dobertsberger. Otto is one of our senior software developers and earned his master's and PhD in computer science from the University of Houston. His background is in heavy computational genetic and genomic data analysis using C and C++. He specializes in WPF, C Sharp, and C++, and is proficient in several other languages as well. He has authored numerous scientific papers, magazine articles, is a frequent speaker at conferences, and is an adjunct professor at the University of Houston. When he's not writing code, though, he's usually found somewhere in the gym, training for his next powerlifting competition. Competition. Yes, you read the text on that image correctly. 700 pounds. During his presentation, Otto is going to be showing a number of demos and Fotino walkthroughs. Members of the Fotino team are available in the chat window to answer any questions you may have throughout the presentation. Code Magazine is the leading software developer magazine written by expert developers for developers. As a benefit for attending today, all registered attendees will automatically receive a free Code Magazine subscription, provided you don't already subscribe based on the email you registered with. I've also included a free subscription link to share with your coder friends, associates, colleagues, team lead, CTO, your social media followers, your enemies, your arch nemesis, and so on. Code Consulting's continuing mission is to help people build better software. We build custom solutions, modernize legacy applications, and support, maintain, or enhance existing applications. Whether it's cloud-based or on-prem, a web application, a mobile app, or a Windows desktop application, we can help you with whatever platform you're targeting, including Fotino, of course. Our team of expert developers and consultants are ready to help you with your project. Our very popular and in-demand free hour of code provides an opportunity for you and your team to meet with our hand-picked team of experts to ask any questions you may have, or brainstorm architectural ideas, or, or talk about JavaScript frameworks, or discuss cloud strategies and best practices, and whatever else you want to pick our brains on. No charge, no strings, no commitment, no credit card, just free help from our code experts. Slots are limited, so reach out to me about getting your free hour of code scheduled. We would like your feedback about this webinar in the form of a quick survey, and we're willing to pay 100 bucks to one lucky winner. The survey is very short, and you'll finish it in no time flat. It's almost time to turn things over to Otto, but before I do, I want to answer some Fotino questions for you. Like, what is Fotino? Why do I want to use Fotino? Where do I find Fotino? How do I contribute to the Fotino project? And what if I need help? Well, what is Fotino? It's an open source project that allows developers to create cross-platform applications using web development technology. You can leverage your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript skills to create apps that run on Windows, Linux, and the Mac. Fotino features include the ability to include multiple languages, support for frameworks like .NET 5, the ability to use web UI frameworks like Angular, React, Vue, and Blazor, and creating applications that are much smaller than Electron. So what is a Fotino? It's a hypothetical subatomic particle, the fermion wimp superpartner of the photon predicted by supersymmetry. Look at me sounding like a cast member of the Big Bang Theory. You will find additional information about Fotino on the tryfotino.io website. The full source code repository is available in the Fotino GitHub repo. Lastly, the recording of this webinar will be on the Code Presents page and the tryfotino.io website. Okay, that's enough for me. It's demo time, and that means it's time for me to turn things over to Otto. Take it away, Otto. Thank you, Jim. Uh, yeah, hello, everyone. My name is Otto. I'm one of the developers behind Fotino, one of the few that have put a lot of time into this project in the last uh, several weeks to get this out and ready for launch. And uh, well, here we are. I'm very excited to be able to present this to you today. Um, some of you might have heard about Fotino. Uh, some of you have not heard about it at all yet. So I'm going to start with a little overview of what Fotino is, what the motivation behind it is, why we're doing this, 
Then we're going into what can you do with it and a few samples of what kind of applications you can create, how you can get started. And I'll give you several different ways how a typical developer can get started in creating a Fotino application. Now, what is Fotino? Uh, Fotino is a technology uh, that allows you to create native applications for any operating system. Uh, for Windows, for Mac OS, or for Linux. And all you need is typical web development skills. Uh, you can use something simple as uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create a web application and uh, publish it and host it in a Fotino application. Or you can go a little bit further and take one of the frameworks uh, like React or Angular, uh, Vue, or even... Uh, Microsoft Blazor, if you want, to create a web application, but deploy it as a native desktop application on any operating system. Now, what is the motivation behind Fotino? Uh, well, some of you might be familiar with other technologies, other platforms that are similar, like uh, Electron, for instance. Uh, and what we want to offer is a technology, a platform that allows you to create applications that are as small as possible and use as little resources as possible. We don't want an application that just idles in the background to consume hundreds of megabytes uh, of memory, for instance. We think that's unnecessary and want to keep this as small and slim as possible. The uh, Fotino project is open source, so everybody is obviously invited to contribute and uh, work on this with us uh, to any extent you want. Um, the Fotino effort is broken up into several uh, hierarchies, so to say. At the, at the very bottom, we have the native project. The uh, Fotino native project is a C++ and Objective-C uh, for Mac OS uh, wrapper around whatever operating systems built in native browser is available. Uh, so for uh, Windows, for instance, the WebView 2 control is what Fotino is taking and the native um, project is taking a native window, like in Windows, a Win32 window, wrapping it around that browser control and giving that one level higher in this hierarchy uh, to display and uh, show the UI for the project. The Fotino native project, most of the people who want to work with Fotino won't have to delve into the source code for that. If you just want to create Fotino apps, you will probably not come into contact with the source code of the Fotino native project. And instead, your project will just consume this as a NuGet package. <clears throat> The uh, cross-platform uh, feature and the reason uh, it is so lightweight uh, has several uh, origins. Um, for one, it is cross-platform because the wrapper that uses the Fotino native control that we create is written in .NET 5, and that means uh, we can use that on any of the three operating systems. We only have one source code. <clears throat> and since the UI that you create is written in a uh, web language, it is also just one code base for your UI. So it's really, you have one code base for your entire project, and once you build and deploy it, it will run on any of the three operating systems. And uh, it is, one of the reasons it is so lightweight is because the browser control that the native project utilizes is usually already installed on the operating system. Now, there can be instances, right, where this isn't the case and where you might uh, say, hey, I have a Windows Enterprise uh, device or I have a device with a Linux distribution on it where there's nothing installed. It's just the bare minimum that's there and I don't want anything installed there either, right? I want to uh, have my clients only run my application and that's it and nothing else. I don't want to have to install a browser or anything on there. I don't even want to install .NET 5 on there. That is fine too, right? With Fotino, you can package these requirements with your application so that browser control can come with the Fotino deployed application just like .NET 5. If it's not already installed there, it can be packaged as well. 
the Fotino.net wrapper in that hierarchy one step above the native um, project is what takes that native control and makes it available to .NET developers. And again, for people who just want to create Fotino applications, again, this is not a, a project they would have to go and look what's under the hood, so to say. They would just consume this project as a NuGet package as well. So here's the hierarchy that I've been speaking of. Uh, we have Fotino.native that is consumed by the Fotino.net project. If somebody were to say, hey, I want to make this available not just to the .NET community, right? Somebody might say, I want to make this available to Rust developers. Um, that is no problem at all, right? You can take and consume the Fotino native wrapper, that window that is spun up and hosts that browser control, <coughs> embed it in a uh, Fotino Rust project, for instance, where you call this window, make the appropriate uh, or call the appropriate message loops to interact with the native window, and you can therefore create a Fotino.Rust environment, for instance, to uh, allow Fotino to be used in Rust projects. Now, our Fotino.NET wrapper, the one that runs in .NET 5, we utilize that in all our test projects, in our sample projects, in our Fotino.Blazor project, for instance, and all our code uh, templates and Visual Studio extensions utilize the, that as well, since they stem from the samples projects. But you will see all of these samples in a live demo as well. Now, what can you build with Fotino? Well, in theory, anything you can build as a web application, right? You can take just HTML, JavaScript, and CSS and build something very simple, right? Just a, a small little web page or web app, for instance. Um, or you can go a step further and say, hey, I want to create a very rich uh, application using one of my favorite uh, JavaScript frameworks, uh, React or Angular or Vue, uh, and make that a full-fledged application with a lot of different uh, features. You can even say, hey, I would like to create a game, right? I want to make a video game, a 3D game that runs on Windows, Linux, and uh, Mac OS, and that's not a problem either, right? So we have a uh, sample for that actually as well. We have an example where we use the 3JS framework. It's a JavaScript framework that allows you to create 3D applications in JavaScript. And uh, we you know, deploy that as a Fotino application. And uh, we have uh, a little game that you can play on any of the operating systems uh, if you deploy that as a Fotino application. Now, I have mentioned before that we compare ourselves with whatever else is available in that uh, area in the industry. And uh, when we compare ourselves with Electron, you can see that just by looking at the download size, the application size of the package, uh, Fortino has a huge advantage already, right? It's not dependent on Node.js, for instance. And uh, especially if .NET 5 is already installed on the machine, uh, that difference is huge, right? We have a very, very small package size for our deployed applications. Now, not just the package size of the applications is small, also the memory consumption is significantly less than a comparable app that runs in Electron. And uh, that also has to do with uh, the WebKit and uh, WebView controls uh, especially on Mac and Linux, use a lot less memory than Chromium, for instance, does. Where, in general, can you get more info about Fotino? Well, first uh, is our website, tryfotino.io. This is our main website where all our news are posted, uh, all the links are posted, links to documentation and so on. Also, our GitHub is referenced there. The GitHub is available at github.com slash tryfotino. This is uh, where we welcome everyone to join the community and work with us on this, submit your pull requests, and be part of this great effort. Also, on docs.tryfotino.io, we have a very exhaustive uh, collection of documentation for everything that you, know, you would need to get started, to start developing on it, to start consuming the NuGet packages, and so on. All of that is documented on our docs page. <clears throat> 
Now with that, let's, uh, before we go into the samples and demos, uh, let's give that a look real quick here on our website. Uh, this is where everything, as I said, is documented, where we have our links to get started and to the documentation. Uh, we have some information about how it works, why it's uh, lightweight, how it is cross-platform, how to get started in command line, for instance, uh, the link to the GitHub, something of how under the hood, how exactly does it work, a little bit of information here. Uh, and then we have some of these statistics in comparison with Electron. And at the bottom here, you can see what's next. This is where we will update what is next on the horizon for us. What do we want to bring into Fotino next? What functionality are we working on? Uh, and some of this stuff we are already very close in uh, finishing and we'll keep this updated obviously on a continuous basis. The GitHub repo has multiple projects on here, right? So we have our Fotino.net, our Fotino.native project on here. Our documentation is on here. Our samples are on here. So all of these projects are available to you. You can go into them. You can try them out. You can contribute to them on any level you want, right? You can decide, hey, I want to, you know, learn and see how this works under the hood and get started and look into the code of the native project, for instance, and then see how the native project communicates with the .NET project to make all this available to the developers. Or you can say, hey, I'm not interested in that. I just want to consume these as NuGet packages and I want to see how is this implemented on a higher level where it's made available to the .NET developers because I would like to make this available to the Rust community or the Go community or any of these other languages. Now here on our uh, documentation page, this is where we have a lot of articles about the individual projects that we have, the setup for the templates, the setup for Visual Studio extensions, uh, more information about our native project, more information about our .NET project and so on. Uh, frequently asked questions, everything there. I'm not going to go over every single one of these pages because um, I don't wanna read all this to you. Um, but if you go to the documentation page on Fotino, uh, docs.fotino.io, then uh, you should see all of this yourself. And here, just for your information, also the, uh, on nougat.org is where we have our nougat packages uh, hosted. So this is where whenever we make a new build, our uh, DevOps pipeline automatically publishes whatever goes into our master branch on these projects, compiles it, and creates a NuGet package that is hosted on NuGet.org. <clears throat> now with that, a little bit of an overview of what Fotino is and so on, we're now going to go and get started on how does somebody who is a developer uh, get to start a Fotino application. And there's in general three different ways how somebody can get started. The first um, way how you can you know, get a Fotino application started is if you go to GitHub and clone the samples project, right? If you clone a samples project, you will have every single one of these samples as a Visual Studio project. And we're going to, uh, look what this project looks like, what these um, individual projects that you get with this solution do, and what we can uh, do with these sample projects. So the first project that I want to go over here is the Fotino.net project. Uh, when you open the Fotino.net project it, uh, and make it your startup project, let's just run this and see what happens. Uh, the first thing when you start any Fotino application is that you will always have a console that you know, runs and spins up the Fotino application and the Fotino application creates that native window that will then run. So here we have our Fotino application uh, and a native Win32 window and we see that we just have some text on here, a picture, and we can call .NET and say, hello Fotino community. Now, What's behind this call.net button? Let's take a look, uh, look behind the scenes, so to say, what happens in uh, a Fotino project. So the Fotino project, as you can see here on the right, has uh, usually a folder called www.root, which is by definition uh, our root folder where we look for the index.html, the starting point for a Fotino application. 
So on any setup, doesn't matter if it is uh, a setup with, right now we just have an index.html, right? We don't have a CSS file, we don't have a JavaScript file, we just have a plain HTML file here that shows us this UI here. But if you had a setup with a framework, for instance, all you would have to do is make sure that your framework builds into the www root folder. And if that is where your build goes, that's where your index.html is, Fotino can pick it up and display it in the Fotino window. Now, in let's make sure we have our index.html open and our program.cs file open. So our index.html has a button that calls the function call.net. The function here just sends a message to our external window, right, through the hosting window and says, hey, hello, Fotino community. And whenever our index.html receives uh, a message back, we make a regular JavaScript alert and show that message, right? So we take this string, hello, Fotino community, and send it to the window. Now, our Fotino application, if we look here, we have a, uh, web, a web message received handler here registered that says, hey, anytime I receive a message from my UI, I can do something with it. And well, what do I do? I send a message back and I say, hey, I got the message and I send this message back, right? So it starts here by sending hello Fotino community. Our window receives this message takes it, says, hey, I got the message, I'm sending this back. And then our UI says, hey, whenever I receive a message, I'm alerting it, right? And I'm showing it on the UI. What else does the Fotino app here do? The only thing that you need to do, well, you can register certain events here, right? And say what happens if you receive a message, for instance. Uh, you have to say, where do we load, right? Where do we go for our initial starting point in by default, it is the www root folder, but that can be changed, right? That is just by our convention where we have everything, but you can change that however you would like. And then we say window wait for close, which means, hey, start up and just run until the user closes it, right? Either uh, by clicking the, the X button on the native window or by calling the close function from somewhere else, right? You could have a button on your UI, for instance, that says close the window or whatever. Right. So when we look at how this works, if I say, hey, call.net, I'm making the call to .net, the call.net uh, .net window receives the message, adds got message to it, sends it back to the UI, and the UI alerts it as uh, this little alert window here. All right, so that is just the very most simplest uh, Hello Fotino uh, .NET project, but there is a bunch of other projects in this sample folder, right? So we, for instance, have the React folder, and uh, the React folder, uh, let's make this our startup project. If I start up the React project, you can see that, again, the console window starts up, the console window spins up our React app, and there it is. This is our React application running in Fotino. Uh, the setup is very similar, right? So we have our www root folder. This is where the React application, the React UI uh, project builds into. This is where we have our index.html, the assets and so on, whatever React needs. And here we have our React app in the user interface, which is, you know, where's the React app? You can develop that separately, for instance, right? You can say, hey, I wanna, uh, develop my React application, test it in a regular web environment and so on, and then deploy it as a Fotino application. Uh, all right, so that is the React application. We have a view application as a sample as well, right? So with the view, it's very similar. We start it up, our window spins up, and here is our view application running in Fotino. Uh, the setup and the architecture, again, very similar. We have our www root folder, and uh, we have our UI project here, and it just builds into this www root folder and makes it available to Fotino to spin up. Uh, also, as another big JavaScript framework, we have the Angular project, so if we make that our startup project, <clears throat> Here we have an Angular app running in our Fotino application. 
And uh, again, this could be some startup or starting point for a developer that says, yeah, I'm an Angular developer. I want to see how this works, right? Take this application, look into the UI project here, see how we, you know, how that React, uh, this Angular app is working in this case, and then build it into the www root folder and uh, make it available through the index HTML and all its resources it needs to Fotino. Now, these are the uh, major JavaScript frameworks that we have and we have samples for. Uh, we also have another web framework that we support, and that is Blazor. So we have a sample project for that as well. So if you go into the Blazor sample and spin that one up, you see the typical uh, Blazor starting application that you might know whenever you create a new Blazor app from uh, scratch. And uh, by the way, all these frameworks, they you know, pertain all their typical dynamics, right? So if the window is small and the framework would think, hey, this could be you know, a mobile device or a tablet or whatever, it keeps uh, the dynamics and says, hey, this is the layout for a mobile or a tablet device, right? And as soon as I make this bigger, it you know, turns into the standard Blazor layout that we are familiar with. And that is you know, now this typical Blazor application that we all... Uh, have seen when we start a new Blazor app. Uh, but here we have a window tab that gives us access to some of the things that a typical Blazor app cannot do. In fact, that none of the web frameworks can do, right? So yeah, you can change window size and, and stuff. Yeah, that uh, you can do. But you can, for instance, say, hey, I don't want my Blazor app that is, you know, I can resize this right now, just like I could if it was to run in a browser. But if I say, I don't want this resizable anymore, right, then I can no longer resize it right now. It's a fixed size. The user has no option to make this smaller or bigger anymore. Also, you can say, hey, this runs uh, in this window, but I want this to be the topmost window at all times, right? I don't want anything to ever overlay this, right? So, because if I click here, obviously it goes in the background. But if I were to say, hey, this is topmost all the time, right? Now, if I click back here, it stays, right? I cannot put my uh, Fotino app in the background anymore. So that opens up a lot of opportunities for very particular scenarios, right? So for instance, you have a machine that runs a Windows Enterprise uh, operating system or some uh, Linux distribution, something very small, slim, with nothing installed, no other apps installed, no browser and so installed, and you just want your application to be in the foreground at all times, right? Uh, for instance, in the service industry, for restaurants and hotels and so on, this is very common, where you have a screen and you have your table management or whatever uh, in the foreground at all times, and you don't want anything to ever overlay this, right? So you can create your web application, and deploy it as a Fotino app on whatever device you might want to deploy it as. And uh, then you can make sure that once the app starts, it stays full screen, it stays topmost, nothing will ever put it into the background, nothing will ever overlay it, right? No matter what the user is trying to do. And yeah, these kind of things you couldn't do if this was running in a browser, right? You can't tell the browser, hey, I don't want you to go in the background, right? If the application doesn't have control over the browser window. There's other stuff, right? We have other uh, app features and stuff we have access to. I, for instance, can change the icon on my uh, window, also something that you wouldn't be able to do in a typical web app, right? You can just change the symbol of Chrome or Firefox or whatever. But here on the top, we have the symbol for Blazor. Uh, and if I were to say, hey, I want to change this to the view icon, right? And say, hey, Blazor app, pretend you're a view app or whatever. I can change this and uh, now you can see up here I have uh, changed the icon of my window. Um, not that that is something that a typical app would do or you would need, but just to show we have access to all this, right? This is the window that we have access, everything about this window we have access to from our web application, right? We don't have to have separate controls. We don't have to have native controls to access this. We can do this directly from the web application that runs inside our Fortino application. 
Now, these are the samples for web frameworks, right? We have other samples as well that have more to do with functionality. So for instance, you will see there is a gRPC project. If I set this one as my startup, then I will spin up another Fotino app that establishes gRPC communication channels and I can get some messages sent back and forth through gRPC. So if I keep my console window here in the background visible, I can say, um, I would like to, hello community, send this as a gRPC call and very similar uh, to making other calls, we're now using the gRPC pipeline and sending that uh, as a service call and saying, hello, hello community. Well, it says hello twice because it by default attaches hello uh, to whatever message I send. So if I just say Fotino here, it will say hello Fotino. <clears throat> and that is just uh, another thing that we want to include. So if people were to say, hey, I like to you know, establish my services through gRPC, we have a sample here that allows you to do that and utilize that. Now there is a few more, right? There is another project called the advanced.net project. Let's make that our startup and see what other functionalities do we have. Uh, and what other functionalities do we have samples for that you can pull and incorporate in your application. Uh, so in this advanced.net Fotino application. <clears throat> uh, we have certain things where we can call that net via a text that's uh, passed to a memory buffer. So we have sample application code for that. We can also show the Swagger page for local web API. So if I click here, it opens up local Swagger page and I can, uh, for instance, say, hey, I wanna see all my printers, right? Uh, try this out and execute this and I should get a response of my local printers that my system and therefore my Fotino application has access to, right? So if this runs, it doesn't take too long, then I should see as a result my printers that I have access to on this machine. Now, if I wanna go back, right, you could in, you know, incorporate your typical back buttons, navigation buttons or whatever in your uh, page. But since it's not a browser window and doesn't have the typical back buttons, you still have access to the typical browser functionalities, right? So if I don't have a back button and I wanna go back, I can say I uh, use the key combination Alt and Left key that you know works on uh, typical browsers as well, works in Fotino apps as well, right? Uh, I can, <clears throat> now I don't have to use, you know, the Swagger page to make these calls, right? I can incorporate that directly on my UI as well. If I want to see what are the printers that I have access to, right? I can, you know, call this button here and see a list of the printers that my app has access to. Uh, I can get a list of the supported PowerShell commandlets, right? What can I, you know, what commandlets can I use? And this is a very exhaustive list. This is alphabetically sorted, so it's just uh, going to A here. The rest doesn't fit in this window. Uh, but I can run these commandlets directly from my Fotino applications as well. So I can run the get time zone commandlet, for instance, and it will say, this is my uh, local time zone that I am in. I can use a different one and say, I would like to say what's on my clipboard, right? I want to have access to what I have currently copied to my clipboard. So let's copy something and let's say, hello, Fotino uh, community. <clears throat> and I'm copying this or I cut it in this case. Uh, I'm going to make the call to the clipboard and if I run uh, the uh, PowerShell commandlet, it will say, hello, Fotino community, what is currently in my clipboard. Uh, I have access to local files, obviously. I can open them, I can save them, right? I can open a local file dialog here and say, hey, open something on my desktop, the pull requests uh, text file, for instance. And then it says here, this is my uh, path to that file. Same thing goes for uh, save. Uh, files and 
there's other stuff too, right? I can say, I want to have the native color picker of the operating system, right? I can call that and say, here's the Windows color picker, right? you know, from MS Paint, for instance. I can pick a color, red, and it will say, hey, you pick the color red. If you pick a color that's, you know, not a, a named color, but something uh, more complex, you say that, and it says, this is the color you picked in ARGB values, for instance. So that is another collection of advanced.net calls you can make directly from a Fortino application. Now, I mentioned before that we also have uh, a sample for video games, right? For 3D games. And there we have our sample for Hello Fortino 3D. So if I make that my startup project and run it, <coughs> it will spin up a window that runs my 3D game. And uh, we implemented a little Pong game here since it's running in Fortino, we call it Pongino. Um, you might not see this as fluent as I do, right? Because the stream might not capture every frame. But if you try this out yourself, right? If you go to the samples and get the uh, Hello Fortino.3D sample, then you will see that it runs completely fluent and you can play Pong against the AI here. <clears throat> so we have a little, not very smart apparently, uh, AI uh, computer. Uh, that you can play Pong against, and uh, that is just a starting point, how you could create 3D games using the 3JS framework. Now, how does this you know, setup look in the project itself? It looks very similar to any of the others, right? If I open this up, it will say, here is the depth of the root folder with my index.html and the accompanying JS libraries and JS code that enable you to create that 3D game, right? According to uh, the 3JS framework uh, and their architecture, all the JS files and libraries are in here. Now, you might say, okay, so that is a very simple game that just runs standalone. And you can deploy this as a little you know, game for whatever operating system you then want. But you can take this a step further and say, hey, I want you know, my game to run inside a more complex environment, for instance, as a React app. So that would give you access to all the React features in your game as well, right? You can say, I want to have access to state management and, you know, I make a very nice looking login screen or whatever, and maybe even do some multiplayer stuff or whatever. So we have a 3D React project here as well. If I make that my startup project, then... I will start up a 3D application that now runs inside a React wrapper that is hosted in the Fotino app. <clears throat> and again, this animation here might not run as smooth and as fluent as it does for me because again, the stream might cut out a few frames here, but if you get this 3D.React sample yourself, you will see that the animation is completely fluent and there is no performance hit or problems whatsoever. And it's just a 3D object here that turns, spins, and moves around. And I have access to this 3D space with my mouse and can look at this from all sides uh, and see the Fortino.io uh, name tag up here as well, just to emphasize that we are, in fact, in a 3D space here. <clears throat> now, that is just one of the examples how you could create games and deploy them as native apps, right? You don't have to use that specific 3JS framework to do that. There's other frameworks out there as well. And you know you can use all of them as long as you can create a web application with them and host that in Fortino. You're set and you're good to go to deploy a game for any of the operating systems with just one code base. The last sample project that we have here is the Fortino app with API. So if I make this my startup project and run this, I will see an app that uh, also has an API project that will spin up in the background. And I can make some API calls for weather um, forecast, right? So if you want to make some API calls on some, to some endpoints and get the weather for the week, um, this is an example where all these functionalities are showcased and implemented. And if I upload this, it will tell me uh, the forecast for the next five days in this case. Now that concludes this 
one way how to get started, right? So this is the collection of sample projects that we have that you're, you know, able to clone from GitHub, dive into, modify, change, or use those as a starting point to get started with Fotino. We have other ways how to get started as well. And one of them, for instance, is getting started through command line. So if I were to open a <clears throat> empty folder here and let's uh, open this, let's make it completely empty and open a PowerShell window here. <clears throat> and I can say, all right, how do I get started uh, through .NET commands? So I can say .NET new dash I uh, try Fortino.vs code.project.templates. Now that will install the Fortino templates. Um, I have already installed them, right? So it's not going to uh, reinstall install them. It's just going to check if it needs to restore any, but that will install the uh, VS Code templates and list them. So among those Fortino samples that I have here, if obviously other templates installed as well, but you can see here is the list of templates that I have installed on my machine. I can always, if I want to see what templates do I really have, I can always say .NET new dash L to list these one more time. Um, and if I want to start a new app, let's say I want to start an Angular app, right? I can just say .NET uh, new Fortino Angular and run this and it will create the project and the project architecture for a new Angular application. That's now done. Now I have to restore it, right? I have to make sure it loads all the NuGet packages uh, that it needs. So .NET restore. Now it's restoring all the packages, done really quickly as well. If I run .NET build, it will build my project. Uh, it shouldn't take very long either and it will, uh, when it tells me it was successful, build succeeded, I can now run this from command line, .NET run, and it will spin up, you know, first the command line, the command line opens up the Fortino application, and the Fortino application runs in my Fortino window here. That is my uh, Angular application, now started, created, and started from command line only. And now that I have created this, right, I can use whatever IDE or development environment I want or I'm familiar with to develop this application, right? Because I now have access to uh, all the folder structure that, you know, the, uh, was created for me. And uh, if I were to say, hey, I want to, you know, develop this in a text editor or whatever other editors you, you know, like and just build it and start it from command line, I can do that as I have just shown from my Windows PowerShell. Or I can say, hey, I you know, created the app and it seems to work and everything is fine, but I'm really now into uh, working with this in Visual Studio. So I can uh, start this from a Visual Studio application and say, hey, uh, just open this uh, project file here and uh, let's run this in Visual Studio 19. And I have now my application open in a Visual Studio window and can get started developing here, right? So it will show me the folder structure of this application and the Angular project is in there in the user interface folder and deploys to the www root folder. So now I have the same setup that I had before when I used one of the sample projects uh, to get started. <clears throat> now, obviously I'm not going to do that one more time. We already went through this, so, I'm going to go ahead and go to the third way how you can get started with a Fotino application. And that is through the Visual Studio extension. So if you are a Visual Studio developer, uh, you can go to extensions, go to manage extensions and say, I would like to look for Fotino and you will find the Fotino samples as project templates. Now, you can click those and install them, right? I can install them. I already have installed them. But if you select them and install them, then Visual Studio will give you access to the sample projects as project templates. 
Now, Visual Studio will ask you to restart, right? That's just a Visual Studio thing that happens whenever you install one of these templates. But once they are installed, you can then go and say, hey, I would like to create a new project. Uh, go to File, go to New Project. And just as you, know, you would normally create any application, I would like to create a Fotino application, right? And I have the project templates here. So let's say I want to create a React app, right? Or a standard.net example, the standard.net Hello World app that we had, or a Vue app or whatever. Let's pick React, for instance, and say, okay, I would like to create this. And I'm going to just call it uh, Hello World React. Uh, and everything looks good. I'm going to create this application. And it will set up this project as a Fotina React app for me with all the architecture it needs. The folder structure is there. The default React app is uh, present in the user interface folder. And uh, will, you know, I can deploy that into my www root folder. And if I run this, I will build and run the standard uh, React application host uh, in a Fotino window. <clears throat> and there we are. We have a React app now running, and that could be my starting point for Fotino applications. Now, this whole process with creating Visual Studio templates is also very well documented on our uh, documentation page and is very helpful for uh, instances where you say you have a you know, company a firm, you have several different projects and all of these uh, projects should look the same and follow a certain template, right? So you can create yourself a, a project template, for instance, using any technology, any framework and say, this is how we do our apps. This is how all our apps should look, right? They all have the same icon. They all have the same uh, navigation menu, the same kind of buttons uh, to move around within the app and so on. Just a, a basic company shell for any app that you would like to you know, deploy. Create one uh, such app and then create a Visual Studio template for it. Deploy that Visual Studio template and make this available to all of your developers or developer teams. So whenever a new project is started, they have a starting point. And that starting point will you know, make any app developed for uh, that company look the same. So you can make a very uniform look across the landscape of applications you're developing. You can also use this template to, you know, let's say you have a company that has several different applications, maybe even written in different um, frameworks. You might have some applications written uh, in Vue, then an Angular app, maybe a new Blazor app or whatever, and they all kind of look a little different. And you kind of want to bring some uniformity into this and at the same time deploy this as a native desktop application. You can say, hey, you can keep developing your projects as you know, your Vue app or as your Angular app or whatever. Uh, but then when it comes to deployment, we're going to open this uh, template that we have created. You're going to deploy your app into our template. It will have the same window. It will have the same icon. It will look at least somewhat similar, no matter what the underlying technology is that has been used to create this application and suddenly your Vue app and your Angular app will by default look at least somewhat similar when they are deployed and you know, are branded as a uh, application from one origin. Now this whole deployment thing um, also has other benefits, right? So let's say you have web applications that you deploy and that your users or your clients use. <clears throat> But uh, when you have a web application, in most cases, the client is required to maintain uh, an internet connection to run a web application. Now, there is some ways around this, right? You could make your web application a progressive web app and deploy this uh, PWA on different devices and you know, have some offline capabilities. But then when it comes to, all right, how do we do loading and saving and that sort of stuff, you're getting to more limitations again, right? Because then what do you do? Well, yeah, you can use maybe the browser's index DB, uh, which is also limited 
um, for some, you know, caching for some intermediate saving. And then, you know, once internet is restored or connection is available again, sync it up to your production database and so on. Um, but if you were able to deploy your application as a native app with Fortino, for instance, it will run um, offline by default, right? It, the Fortino application will spin up and load your UI and you can implement your service calls to say, hey, if you have internet connection, fine, make the service call to, you know, whatever backend you have, connect to the database and make all the operations. Um, but if you don't have any internet connection, all these services could, instead of targeting your production database somewhere in the cloud, uh, they could target a local MySQL database or SQLite database or whatever small instance of a database you want that you can package with your Fotino app, deploy it with it to give it some default offline capabilities, right? So you can say, hey, we have these, uh, you know, people that work somewhere remote, somewhere outside. Uh, they don't always have internet available to wherever location they're at. Uh, but they have laptops and or they have devices that run Linux or whatever. And we want them, you know, to take pictures of certain things, log certain things or whatever, type all this information in, save it locally at first, spin up this uh, local SQLite database if they don't have connection. And then once they get to a point where they can establish some internet connection again, your app could, you know, after confirming connection is established, sync up whatever you have in your local database with your production database and get everything synced up again. So that is another thing where you can, you know, make, take a big benefit out of uh, making a web app available offline. Um, we also have the option to run Fotino in a Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, if you're into that environment, uh, we have some documentation about this as well on our documentation page. Um, if you go and set this up, we have listed that there are some extra steps required. So there is some configuration needed. We have tried to document it as detailed as possible to make this process uh, as convenient as possible. But yeah, it runs and we have tested it with... Uh, Windows subsystem for Linux 2 and uh, Ubuntu 20.04, and that works as well. Um, the uh, last thing I want to mention is that you, you know, might have existing applications um, that have been, you know, running in the web until now and uh, that might you know need updating that you know run on old tech or whatever uh, and are worried if you know that might work with a Fotino application um, in general as long as you can produce an index 8.html or whatever you want to call it right by convention it's called index.html for us and uh, the Fotino application the program that's US, uh, CS uh, is pointing to that starting file that you create, uh, it will work, right? It will work, it will be available, and you can host your application no matter what tech it is written in. Could, uh, you know, be um, a Java web application even uh, that you create and that you want to host in a Fortino application. As long as you can you know, create such an index.html and uh, run it from there. Um, and Fortino can navigate to it, find it, open it, and show it in the native window. Uh, it will work and you can create Fortino apps out of existing applications that way. Um, I think so far that concludes my presentation on Fortino. I think I've gone over uh, all the different ways how to get started. I have explained what Fortino is, how it works, uh, why we're doing this and so on, how to get involved in this community. And it would be great to see uh, many of you joining this effort, uh, look into Fortino, maybe try out the samples, um, get started, ask us some questions, uh, send us some uh, reviews, some feedback and send us some pull requests right if you want to get started and start working on this working on additional features some improvements to some of the aspects that we have um already on our uh github uh 
we are very, very happy to work with any of you on this project and this endeavor. And yeah, would be great to see many of you uh, on this you know, path to making Fortina a very, very big and great framework that a lot of people will use and the community enjoys to create native desktop applications. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, having me, Jim. With that, it's going back to you. Thanks, Otto. Well, that just about wraps up this webinar. Don't forget to fill out the event survey to be eligible for the $100 Amazon gift card. Make sure you complete the survey by Friday at 11.59 Eastern Time. Schedule your hour of code and get free help from our team of expert developers. Our next State of .NET webinar is Wednesday, March 31st at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and it will cover the state of DevOps. And that's a wrap. Otto, myself, and all the members of the Code family hope you found this helpful and are excited about building your first Fotino application. Members of the Fotino team will stick around in the chat window answering any questions you may have. We look forward to you joining the Fotino open source community on GitHub. Thank you for attending today.